Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and in this episode I have a bit of a problem. It seems like um, it has not been counting the time that our crew has been spending on this station so far and it only just started counting down again these 30 days when I turned to it. Uh, that's not right and not good. So we'll have to find a way to wait 30 days for this. That would put a crimp in some of our plans. I've got a, a test lunar lander rolled out already. And I certainly want to launch that. I don't know uh, when we can find a time to finish these 30 days. They have supplies. They have 75 days of supplies. But I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to have to force complete this thing or not. We'll see. Okay, but yeah, that's an issue. But let's get on with the test launch. And this is the the Hammond lander, and it is on the launch pad. Okay, so this is the Hammond lander, and we are using the RL10s on this. Looks like we have like 2,500 data units. Maybe some of that was because I purchased data units in the VAB. I don't think I accumulated all of those by testing it. Almost certainly not. So anyway, it's going to be loud and I've tuned the audio down, but I probably should just get a lot of distance so that you can still hear me maybe. But anyway, yep, we're lined up with the moon. Ignition. Set and ignition. Okay, we have a J2 ignition. The J2 will have to reignite, or we hope it will reignite, to start this off towards the moon. Taking a look at the Delta Vs, if it doesn't, it's still technically fine. The Centaur stage has enough to transfer to the moon and make orbit around the moon. And then the lander is looking at 4,300 to land and get back into orbit, which is a little bit tight. I usually budget 4,800, but it's manageable. The ideal situation is this with full MLI layers, so we're, we've got insulation and we're hoping it could sit around for a while. The hope is that that can actually start the descent because the Centaur stage does have many ignitions and in that case the lander will be better off. The return vehicle should have enough fuel to handle the rendezvous with this, the lander, and the rendezvous when the lander makes orbit again. But we'll have to see about that. Of course, everything has to be checked out. No matter what, putting one of these into orbit around the moon would be a huge plus, of course. Even if for some reason we have to refuel it around the moon, it would still be a good thing. Okay, getting ready for shutdown. And shutdown. 215 by 176. And we have 641 meters per second left. Let's hope we can use it. Should we aim for a free return trajectory sort of deal? So going around retrograde? Well, I think we set the Hammond BPs to be prograde. So if we want to ever use them potentially to fuel something up, we should just go ahead and keep it prograde. Hmm. It occurs to me belatedly that we're going to need to stick out some solar panels. 
Well, right now that's not going to get any good exposure, but okay, it says very stable. So, ignition. And it has started. Separation and ignition. Oh, uh, yeah, we do have solar panels on this stage, so that's good. I have not tested whether tilting these out actually helps if one goes out. Hopefully we do not have to find out. We appear to be on time with the burn. Okay, preparing for shutdown. Okay, that was a pretty good shutdown. Well, but it's a uh, harsh inclination. Let's see. If we do a mid-course adjustment, how much would we need? Okay, well, 10 meters per second can cut the relative inclination down to 4.7. I'll do that. And that's uh, burn in six hours. Let's see, the RCS tanks for the Centaur stage are where exactly? Oh, it's built in. Okay. We are recharging. We do still have boil off. Despite a lot of MLI layers. So hopefully I can just do this with the RCS, but that may not be possible. We'll see. I mean, these have nine more ignitions. I guess we'll try it out. Okay, well. We will do the rest with the RCS. Shows less liquid oxygen. I guess they're... I put the wrong fuel mix in. I guess that will give room for the boil off of the hydrogen. Oh, no connection. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. I forgot to activate the commutatrons. Ah. Please, let there be some communication support near the moon. Okay, we're connected now. Alright, let's get those communitrons out. Now, how long do we need? Not long, maybe a minute and a half. We're not quite in the right place to correct inclination right now. So, we'll just ignite. Let's see, it says stable. They both ignited, so a good start. We've captured and off. So roughly circular, 216 by 194, pretty high around the moon, but we're gonna have to rendezvous with it and do other things. And it's got some delta V left. I don't think the boil off is going to be tracked when we're not focused on it, so we can expect this delta V to be here when we get back. So good times. Um, very completely successful mission so far. All right, it seems ready and in good shape. Let's see what we need to do next. Now it's going to be 19 days until the Valiant D is built. That's uh, it has to bring the crew back home from the station, but we need to focus on the station for 30 days before we do that. Um, and then we've got a Hammond, which is the Earth return vehicle and also the one that's going to launch a Kerbal over here. And that's in 53 days. So I think we can focus on the station for 30 days. As much as I hate to do that, given that we're already at April 11th, 1968, I guess we will do that and see if we can get that contract done finally. Um, yeah, I'll, yeah I, I hope it doesn't uh, start the countdown again. Yeah, uh, it's complicated. We'll make sure that we do the 30 days is the point. 
okay uh we are time warping through the 30 days we're uh, we've got 10 days left but we've got an alarm here and that's the valiant d being complete essential of course because that has to bring these guys back and we have a crew duration record already of 14 days so we got some funds for that but we are going to continue time warping here the power has been very stable we probably need to dump the carbon dioxide waste and waste water though and well we also got the crew duration record of 30 days but it's check marked the the 30 days for the crew so now we just have to bring them home okay and that means launching the valiant d okay so this is gonna hang out here let's get back to the space center roll that out and launch okay here we go we are all lined up and hopefully this time everything's on the right node i'll try to be careful but obviously we didn't have the return vessel on the station because it lost its docking port because somehow the docking port was i don't know uh, we'll just make sure every time we stage that everything looks right so do we have the right engines at the bottom yes we do those are the launch clamps okay well yeah lined up uh distance target going up ignition and launch oh this has a very high thrust weight ratio initially i should turn a little bit faster I've been doing very slow turns today. Sort of conditioned by the Kerbalism Real Solar System series, which I recorded right before recording this one. Due to the heavy tanks in that right now, because I haven't put any sort of real fuels or anything, the rockets take a while to get to orbit. So they have to turn fairly slowly. This time we're not carrying any crews, so I won't turn off two of the engines. Good practice to remember that I ought to, but it's safer not to, just in case one goes up. Okay, separation and ignition. All right. LR-105 is a go. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, 269 by 151. Okay, now is the question. Um, let me just... I don't know. I, I don't have any option except to actually let go of that, right? Hmm. Yeah, hopefully I just did it right. Okay. It looks okay. All right. RCS. Oh, wait. Okay. Well, let's be careful now. Those are the up reports. All right. Well, the inclination is fine. Uh, let's decouple the nose cone, sidestep the nose cone. Power has actually been good, um, though it is doing the 2.45 kilowatt of draw. I didn't, I haven't activated the fuel cell, I think. Maybe they start off activated. Let me see. No. They say inactive, so that's interesting. Okay, we are now approaching the station such as it is. Uh, the Delta V available to us is formidable, and even so, the main tank is actually empty. Uh, this was configured for lunar missions. And not really used for that at all. Though maybe for a Mars mission, we'll see. 
the Valiant series has taken a sideline to the Hammonds. Okay, we've crossed the 200 meter boundary. Let's get the station to sort of turn towards us. Technically, we didn't have to deorbit the other one. We could have sort of let it hang out in orbit and have them EVA to it again at the end. But I think, I think this was more prudent. <laughs> the visiting spacecraft is longer than the station. I mean, uh, it doesn't have as much space, obviously. Eight millimeters. Eight millimeters. We're at there. Well, I'm not going to touch that. And we are connected. Okay. Let's see. Uh, RCS off. We don't need to do anything with RCS right now. Okay, transfer crew. Not to that. Internally unreachable. Great. I forgot all about connected life, uh, connected living space. Hmm. All right. Well, turns out they have the EVA after all. And board. Okay. So they should both be in the Gemini capsule and undock. Okay, sign fuel down and the orbit burn. Okay, we are going to dump the service module after we check that everything is okay. Um, ablator looks fine, food bar and oxygen, we've got extra fuel up there, lots of extra fuel. We'll arm the parachutes now, I don't see why that would be an issue, but might as well. I'll get the fuel cell started, I hope that's the right one. <laughs> uh, stupid dual fuel cells. Okay, well we seem to be recharging, that's fine. Okay, and let's just do that. Okay, that took a little bit of time, but we are ready to go. I guess we'll try descent mode. It's not strictly necessary. But might help. It's got the two things for keep the station in orbit check marked, but it doesn't have keep the station in orbit check marked. Hopefully that's going to be okay. I'm always nervous about these complicated contracts and whether each little thing is going to be fulfilled properly by whatever the heck I'm doing. Okay, we're cruising right along, and I believe we're over South America. We lost a lot of little bits from the service module, all the solar panels. Okay, looking good, no problems through re-entry, hardly any ablation really. But low Earth orbit and there's a lunar rated heat shield. Looks like um, we're going to be sailing down over land. Is that right? Well, it's dark. I can't. Well, OK. I think this is Brazil or Uruguay. And yeah, we're not going to make it to the coast. So we will be sailing down here. Okay, we have initial parachute deployment. And we have full parachute deployment bringing us to... Six meters per second. Good times. Okay, and... And we're down. All right. 
Come on, let me recover it. Recover vessel. Okay, so, well, zero science earned. But crew, two XP gained. They have advanced to level one. And... Uh, come on, first space station. It didn't complete. What the heck? Okay, well... Let's just check. Okay, we kept at least... They kept them for 30 days. The check marked that. We returned the crew home. I think it wanted the same crew capsule, but that doesn't really matter, does it? I think it was expecting the same crew capsule, but I'm just calling a foul on that. We could have returned them on that capsule, but and functionally our spacecraft was the same. Station Alpha is definitely still in orbit. I don't know why it hasn't checked off Vessel Station Alpha. I'm going to just call this unacceptable. We're we're done. <laughs> we're done. We did that. So, which one is it? Ah, oh, well, yeah, first space station. Is it going to do that? I clicked on complete already. It, the, the cancel button is sort of spazzing out, though. It doesn't look like it can actually complete it. Hmm. I mean, it says uncancelable, but shouldn't be uncompletable. Well, let me uh, get out of the save and come back in and see if that does it. Okay, I mashed the complete button and it finally did complete. So, okay. Uh, did we actually get the money? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. 1.35 million funds. I think we actually got more from doing the 14-day record and the 30-day record when combining those two. So, yeah, I I put some more upgrades into rate 1 on the VAB, so we're at 10 build points now. So I spent some money on that. Let's wrap things up by doing a test of the Hammond system on the Olympus rocket, and then I'll call it an episode. Okay, so we are going to launch the Hammond spacecraft over to the moon. This is uncrewed and uncrewed test. I thought about maybe putting crew in it, but I think it's a good idea to continue testing things without crew for the time being. And for some reason we have a little bit of waste in the pod. I guess maybe somebody among the pad crew decided to use the facilities in the spacecraft. I'm not too sure about that, but anyway. What, what, what really happened was I accidentally clicked that slider in the VAB and forgot to fix that. But anyway, ignition. And launch. Okay, so this will be the Earth return vehicle. We'll put it into orbit around the moon as a backup, assuming everything works. I really wish we were launching this stuff on better looking rockets, but here we are. Not the most inspiring sight ever. So I am planning a uh, commemoration for the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11. I've started working on it already. It'll probably take a while. It'll consist of a series of videos uh, timed properly, so I'll release them ahead of time, hopefully, so that you guys can watch them at the right time if you want to do so. But I'll also have live streams around that time with everything in sync. The live streams provide a little bit more freedom in terms of content than the YouTube videos will. So I've got more stuff there than I do for YouTube. And some of it will only be sort of tangentially related. For instance, uh, 
the astronauts, a lot of them trained in F-86s initially because of the Korean War. Uh, Mike Collins, for instance, flew an F-86, ejected from one, in fact. So, uh, during the commemoration, I'll fly an F-86 in DCS world kind of thing. But, I mean, that's just... Uh, there'll be more directly related things, obviously. But it's a long eight days. <laughs> it's a long eight days. And I want to get as much entertainment value out there as possible. In terms of our engines, uh, we still have some work to do on the J2, but the RD-253s have full data units. Um, I forgot to change that to the R, uh, RD-58, darn it. That's supposed to be an RD-58, not the 11D-33M, so that's a problem. I'm really surprised, I thought I had fixed that. I really need to consider maybe just using the RL-10s. They performed really well during the recent mission. And maybe that would be a better choice. But it's not fair for me to judge the RD-58 when I keep using the wrong version. Okay, separation, and ignition of the J2, and the J2 failed, so we got saved any questions about this. Uh, okay, well, I guess we should gather some data units on the RD-58-ish thing. Um, it can't really get us to orbit anyway, but we'll, we'll give it a go. Alright, separation, and uh, is it alright? Alright, ignition. Yeah, it um, doesn't have much thrust to weight ratio. This must have been an old version. I'm pretty sure I changed... well... Yeah, I'm gonna have to figure out a newer version of all this. It's a shame to get data units on this one, but they are transferable, I think. To the RD-58. Well, even though this is the wrong version, it seems to have run for most of the time. And we're getting those data units in. Though, what we get here doesn't actually get counted for the next flight. It's, I don't know, it's got some sort of multiplier or something. It averages it out or something, I don't know. Ah, uh, it had its a minor failure. Uh, loss of thrust, not loss of ISP, though. But it doesn't matter, this mission is doomed. Anyway, as this descends into the oblivion, I think uh, I'll call it an episode, and we'll try again next time with an improved version. And so I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time. In case you were wondering, I did decide to recover the capsule.